Hi guys. Today we will take a look at Factory IO and Win SBS. As we will be using these two software, I think we should know a few things that will help us throughout the series. The first time you launch Factory IO, you get the welcome window. Here you can see the documentation and other resources provided by Factory IO to get started using it. In scenes, you get the pre installed scene that you can program. If you click on open, it will show all the scenes that you have created. I'll click on new to create a scene from scratch. When scene opens we get this window, here we have a few option like, option to play the simulation. Options to change the camera, which also changes the function of mouse wheel, and a palette window, to add objects in our scene. When the orbit camera is selected, the mouse wheel can be used to zoom in, or out. When fly camera is selected, the mouse wheel can be used to move up or down along the Y axis. And in first person camera, the height along Y axis is fixed. Now let's talk about palette window. You can click on the rightmost icon or press P to toggle the palette window. By default it shows all the objects and you can scroll down to find what you need. You can also filter objects using the drop down. When you hover over any object, its name can be seen at the bottom of the palette window. Now let's see some more options. Click on files in there, click on options. You can change the settings if you want, I'll leave it to default. Now click on controls. There you can see a list of all the keys which are assigned for various tasks like navigation. Here you can change them if needed or leave everything to default. Now let's try to design an environment. Simply drag and drop any object and place it wherever you want. Now, if you want to move objects above by a certain height, that can be done by pressing V key when you are moving the object and this can be verified from the list given in controls. Let's complete the scene. So we have a control panel, with push buttons, a conveyor, an emitter, to spawn material in our scene, and remover to remove it. Let's try to run the simulation. Click on the view option, and select dock all tags. From here we can turn on conveyor, and see the simulation. Note. We are turning on the conveyor forcefully, as we have not created any logic for the PLC. Now let's talk about WinSBS. When you launch it you can see options to create a new solution, I'll select the solution that I have already created. When you create a new solution you get this type of interface. Click on OB1, and a new window will be shown, here select LAD, to create a program in ladder logic. I already have a network made, let's first see it, and then we will take a look, at how we can create ladder logic. I'll click on the PLC mask, on the right hand side. This open up a software PLC that we can use to see the working of the logic. The input and output address on PLC, are same as we have in our logic network. With the help of these addresses, the PLC is able to understand, which input and output we are using and referring to. In order to make the logic work, we need to upload it to the PLC. 
For this go to menu bar and click on PLC, from there select send all blocks, a pop up will appear just click OK. Now in CPU control center, click on run, to turn on the PLC. The logic is only executed when the PLC is in running mode. Now if I turn on the input on PLC the output will turn on. You can also turn on monitoring mode to see how the power is flowing in the network. Let's try connecting WinSPS to factory I.O. In WinSPS all we need to do is make sure that is target is simulation. Look at the end of the ribbon below menu bar. After that go to factory I.O. and click on files then click on drivers. From the drop down select MHJ. Click on configuration to change the number of I.O. if needed. Now we get a PLC to which we need to connect the input and output. Just drag and drop the input to input side and output to the output side. Now in WinSBS make sure you upload the logic to PLC and the PLC is running in WinSBS. Now if I press the start push button on the control panel, the start light turns on, as we have connected these to the PLC's input and output. Did you notice that the light turns off as soon as I leave the push button? To make it more clear let's see the logic and simulation side by side. When I press the push button, the normally open contact get closed and output turns on. And as soon as I leave it, the contact gets to its normal position, and output turns off. Now let's add a new network. Select LAD. Now click on catalog on the left hand side, and add input contact, and output coil. Now we need to give them address, in Siemens, the syntax is like I, for input, followed by, the number like, 0.0, .0 for first channel's first input. Change the address according to the connection and it's done. And this is all for this video. I hope you liked it, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.